Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday morning. It's Marketplace Monday. Some of y'all just need to stretch out. Yes, sir. It's time to get back at it. It's another week, man. We had a great weekend. I don't know if you had a good weekend. I had a great weekend. We started teaching a new sermon series at the church called The Anointed One and His Anointing. Um, which obviously pertains a lot uh, to our marketplace ministry. Uh, so I'm excited about Fridays. I'm excited about Mondays. Uh, I'm excited. Hey, I'm just excited about every day. Let me not try to make the days any different. I love every day. Every day we get an opportunity to demonstrate the love of God in us, to demonstrate the power of God in us, to be a blessing to people. Man, that's a great thing. I know some of you woke up today feeling downtrodden. I know some of you woke up today not wanting to even get on the broadcast. Some of you woke up today probably not even wanting to hear Pastor Nick, but you're buffeting your flesh and you're getting in the word. Well, I'm here to tell you today, man, it's good. It's good. Say it with me. It's good. It's good. We got to learn to, to, to create our world. Create what it is that we desire. We do that as born-again believers. We do that with our words. Our words create our world. Amen? Let's pray and get right in the word, and then I'll give some shout-outs. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, for each person uh, that's on Marketplace Monday. I thank you, Father, that today, uh, Lord, they'll hear something uh, from your word, Lord, something from you that will help them in the marketplace, that will, will allow them to be more of a blessing. Uh, will allow them to, to, to just do, Father, and fulfill all you've called them to do. I thank you, Father, for their faithfulness and their commitment. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Lakeisha. Alma, good morning. God bless you, uh, young lady. Uh, uh, Ashley, God bless you, young lady. Blessings to you. Shanika, it was very good to see you yesterday. God bless you, young lady. Daryl, God bless you, sir. An Annie, God bless you, young lady. Great to see you. Natifa. God bless you. Madeline, God bless you. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry is in the house. God bless you, Jerry. Candace, God bless you, young lady. Uh, Tony, great to see you, sir. God bless you. Jeremiah, good to see you, son. God bless you. Harry, God bless you. Yalitza, great to see you, young lady. Pray all is well with you. Uh, Erica, good morning. God bless you. Faye, good morning. God bless you. Brenda Ferrandes, great to see you. Ray, good morning, sir. And God bless you, Karen. Love you, young lady. Good to see you. Cynthia, love you. Sending love up to Virginia. Uh, good to see you. Miss Johnson, God bless you. Patty, we love you. God bless you. Alan, great to see you, young man. Miss Kelly, God bless you. Keep reigning and ruling down there in Sarasota. Actually, you know what? I'm going to be down your way. Um, I think, what, what day is that? I'm going to be down on Sunday, the, I think the third Sunday. Uh, I'm going to be down there, me and my wife, Sunday and Monday. Maybe we'll catch up uh, with you and Mark for breakfast or something. I'll shoot you a note. Uh, Therese Leonard, God bless you, young lady. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Amen. Natasha, good to see you again, young lady. Welcome to the broadcast. So let's get going. Today is Marketplace Monday, and uh, we're talking about the marketplace. I, I think the first thing I want everybody to understand about the marketplace today and what God has put on my heart is, We've been called into the marketplace not to conform to the marketplace. We're not conformers. We're not there to just do what we're told, do what we're asked to do, uh, and do what we should do. Say this with me. I am a transformer. We've been called to the marketplace by God. Wherever you're at, however long you've been there, I don't care if you've had a business for 20 years. Now that you've met Pastor Nick, okay, and the anointing of God that's on my life, it's time for that business to start to transform. I don't care if you worked in the same place for 20 years. It's time for the business to start to transform. Because you are there, because you own the business, because you work in the business, because you're a partner in the business, what, wherever you're at, whatever you do, maybe it's not a business, maybe you're a young person in school, wherever you are in the marketplace, the marketplace meaning where are you at during the week, 
that you're not in church. Wherever you're at, you were called there by God to transform that arena. You were there called there to transform it for the better. When you show up, things are getting better. Say it with me. When I show up, things get better. When people spend time in my presence, they get better. See, if you're not saying nothing, you're not creating nothing. Everything in the marketplace, everything in God starts with our words. Why? Because he says in Isaiah, our words cannot go forth and come back vain, void, or non-productive, but they must accomplish those things in which we set them forth to prosper in. It starts with our words. I spoke a word, as you guys all know, we're receiving a sacrificial offering to pay, pay off our building. I spoke a word that somebody's going to sow the whole $87,000 to pay, off, pay it off. Why can't I say that? Why can't I believe for that? People have sown big amounts into our ministry before. Well, Pastor, what about what everybody else does? We'll use that for the renovation for upstairs. Listen, God is good. God is good. I can be, you can believe God for whatever you choose to believe God for. You don't know what God is going to put on the hearts of men and women. You don't know, man. Maybe this, the person that's sowing for 80, the 87,000 is believing God for more $87,000 deals. Maybe they're in sales. Who knows? That's why I sowed when I was in the world and I was a king and I was out there. That's why I sowed 25,000, 50,000. Man, I sow big all the time. Why? Because I wanted God using me to create more wealth. That's what he did. So in the marketplace, you have to start where you're at. You don't start off giving $87,000. You start off where you're at. You start off trusting God to increase you. How is God going to increase you? The thing that you have to understand about the marketplace, you don't get paid to do a job. Write that down. Wherever you're at, get some wisdom here today. You don't, people are not going to pay you to do a job. You see the people that take orders at McDonald's, they do a job, right? They're now getting replaced by technology, right? Now you walk in and you do your own thing. Nobody's gonna pay you to do a job. People will pay you great money to expand vision and provide solutions. Let me say that again. People will pay you great money to expand vision and provide solutions. If I go to an alarm company, let's say there's an alarm company. My dad had an alarm company and it served Tampa Bay, right? I could go to my dad's company and get a job making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, you know, working for the company. But how many of you know if God sends me there and I put a proposal together and I say, Mr. Scaglione, I'm here to come to work with you and I have a proposal to expand the company from Tampa Bay to cover the entire state of Florida over the next two to three years and then expand into the whole nation. And here is how we're going to do it. So I go there to expand vision and I provide a solution. But pastor, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have that education. I don't have this. I don't have that. First of all, stop saying what you don't have. Say what you do have. Say the greater one is living on the inside of you. If the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you, he'll give you wisdom. In the book of James chapter one, verse five in the Amplified, the Bible says this. James chapter one, verse five. It says, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is not just knowledge. Wisdom is how to have success with what you have knowledge of. So wisdom is doing what you have knowledge of successfully. Wisdom is success, okay? So it says, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, in other words, if any of you is deficient in providing a solution to have success, it says, let him ask of God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly 
without reproach or fault finding. And watch this, it will be given unto him. The reason why you don't have solutions, the reason why you're not a vision machine is because you've not asked God. You're so used to making your 50,000 a year, your 100,000 a year, your 250,000 a year. You've never asked God once, how do I double my income? I spoke to everybody in the church and said, everything you touch is going to double. Immediately, you should have started believing for that and greater. Whatever your largest commission check is, you should be believing it's going to double. Whatever your largest year is, you should start believing God, it is going to double. And don't just sit on your hands and believe God is going to double. Ask him, like it says in James 5, to give you wisdom. To give you wisdom. We were sitting in the church one service and my pastor said, I believe it's the will of God for every man and woman that's a believer to have at least millionaire status. My wife looked over at me. She said, honey, we're going to make a million dollars in a year on our W-2. Not even having our own business. Some people have a business and they think because the business makes a million dollars, they made a million. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this to show you what God will do. Do you know in 2011 in the biggest economic downturn in this country's history, I made over a million dollars. Why? Because of my words. Why? Because of God. Why? Because I provided a solution that God gave me at work. It started out with, I wanted to sow $250,000 into the church. That's where it started. And God brought the income. God brought the wisdom. God brought the opportunities for me to do that. And now, and in order for God to flow through you like this, it all starts with humility. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12, it says, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, is in himself, believes in his own ability, believes in his own smarts, believes in his own degree, believes in his own talent. It says, and before honor is humility. So it says when we're haughty, when it's all about us and our ability and what we can do, destruction is coming. But when we make an, a, an opportunity to be humble, God will honor us, meaning God will exalt us, meaning God will lift us up. So as you gather your thoughts, as you meditate on God's word, on how you can make the marketplace that you're in better. How can you be a blessing? How can you be a greater asset and a benefit to the organization you work for, you own, you own part of? I don't know your individual situations, but whatever it is, you have to ask, if you own a, a, you know, a, a lawn cutting company, if, if maybe you own a cleaning company, I know a couple of people in our church that own cleaning businesses. Ask God, how do you become more efficient in that business? Meaning, how do you grow the business and now have somebody working for you that they're out there making you additional money on top of what you're making? We're talking about Marketplace Monday, right? Marketplace Monday is about resources. Marketplace money is about how we become greater kings in the marketplace. And we got to do it all through humility. And we got to do it through wisdom. And we got to do it through God. We got we to gotta be humble people. In Psalms 111, in verse 10 in the uh, King James, Psalms 111, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It doesn't mean be afraid of God. It means reverence God. When it says the fear of the Lord, it means reverence God. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, a good understanding has have all those who do his commandments. His praises endure forever. So it tells us right there when we trust God, when we believe God, when we honor God, we are going to have a good understanding. So we have to get a revelation of that. God loves us. 
God wants us prospering. God wants us to be victorious. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible's not a magic book. And Jesus is not a genie. It is going to require us to take some actions. It's going to require us to take some steps. And it's going to require you to go from your everyday mundane positioning in life. Like today, just getting up and going to work again. You're going to have to start, man, when, when, when man, I get up, I sleep Sunday after I get home from church. I don't know why. It's the only day or evening I take a nap, but I do. And then I get up, and it's two things on Sunday night. It's normally date night, time I get to spend with my wife, and it's preparation. I sit down, and I look at Sunday. What did we do good? What could, I do a keep, stop, start. What did we do good at the church? What can we do better at the church? What do we need to stop doing at the church? I do that with my business. If I'm getting ready to go to work, how can I be more impactful today? What are the main two or three goals I need to accomplish this week in the marketplace? And I begin to talk about them. I begin to speak about them. I begin to journal, write things down. How can I be better? I ask the Lord as a man of God, how can I be better? This week, my goal is to encourage three strangers as far as the word goes. Man, I want to just be an encouragement to people. That may be sow some money into some folks' life. That may be pray for some folks. That may just be give them an encouraging word. Whatever the Lord leads me. The Lord cannot do what your heart's not fixed on. We're talking about this sacrificial offering. Coming up, it's less than a month away. I'm sowing seed. I'm believing God for increase to come so I have greater to sow into the kingdom of God. God is going to show me that. God is going to lead me in that. So what are you talking to God about? Or are you just waking up on this Marketplace Monday and going through the motions? Stop going through the motions and start going through the transformations. Stop going through the motions and start going through the transformations. If you're not speaking nothing, nothing's happening. So on Marketplace Monday today, I encourage you, number one, humble yourself. Become a humble person. Ask the Lord to give you ideas. Ask the Lord to show you how you can be a greater asset at work. Ask the Lord how you can become more effective in your business. You know, God wants you to rest and God wants you to have a good time. But, you know, some of us, you know, we get caught up in the success we have and we get out there having this good time because we're not asking God to expand our territory, asking God to expand our tent, letting God know we need, well, Pastor, but me and my family are good. I understand you and your family are good, but the kingdom has needs of resources. There are other people out there that, 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 need our blessing and god has anointed you to go into the marketplace and take the wealth of the wicked and bring it into the house of the lord amen if you don't have enough vision for yourself attach yourself to our vision we have vision believe me we'll stretch you we'll demand more of you we'll get you to go harder and further why because that's what we're doing Man, we got to not only change Orlando, we got to change Florida, transformation of Florida, transformation of the nation, transformation of the world. Man, we sow into Africa, we sow into Pakistan, we, we got things going on everywhere. And right here in Orlando, we're finishing and completing our life center. Takes resources to do that. You think paying off the building? That's just the first step. We're going to have a Christian school there. We need about a good $300,000 to finish the renovations, get everything ready. But how I many you know we're not in a hurry? And we're going to trust God, and we're going to continue to make it better and better. Everything we do is going to be in excellence, and you need to be a part of it. We love you, we love you, we love you. Marketplace Money, tomorrow is Together in Marriage Tuesday. Pastor Franny's got some great nuggets for us, so make sure you tune in. Uh, and we're just excited about the word. I hope you are too. Until tomorrow, it's Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life.